Okay. <clears throat> so, how should we start this? Hey guys, and welcome to the Braden and Jasmine show. We're going to yeah. <laughs> we're going to answer some of your questions that we received via DM. Uh, mm -hmm. So let's get started. I'm gonna roll some kind of like not game show music, but oh, like okay. TV music, you know? Okay. Got some questions here. Mm -hmm. Actually, before we start questions, we should just give like a little background mm. on. Mm. Maybe what we do okay. and where we're from, okay. and how we got into doing photography and stuff like that, traveling. Okay. So, um, your name's Brayden. Yeah, <laughs> I uh, I grew up around here, outside of Vancouver. I was born in Surrey at Surrey Memorial Hospital, oh. and uh, <laughs> moved around a bit to Calgary, and then back to. Uh, the Okanagan and then back here near Vancouver and never was into photography before did a lot of um, random jobs restaurants and fitness centers and was in school for kinesiology it's like human movement stuff thought I'd be a chiropractor but then realized that that's a lot of work and mm. I didn't like school so got into photography and video and then now kind of have this as a job um, maybe I'll get into that a bit a bit more with the uh, the company and stuff like that, but yeah. Yeah. How are you? Um, well, I kind of ended up where I am now um, because I moved out to BC coming from a small town, which was like beautiful and outdoorsy and stuff like that, but doesn't have a lot of opportunity. Um, I've been a hairstylist by trade for a really long time. I kind of like fell into the position of the Bachelor at Canada, so I was on TV for a while in Canada, and should we run some clips from that show? <laughs> <laughs> Good. Yeah. Um, and uh, I, yeah, I didn't. I always actually used to take like get you know get my friends to take photos of me, or I take photos of like nature and cool things around where I was from, and then also when I moved to BC. So I already like I was using Instagram kind of to like show things I was doing, um, but then it kind of became like a, an actual kind of career option yeah. once I had been on the TV show and had exposure to a larger audience and I, I kind of just got like tossed into all of it and now I'm... It's like only like a thing that's been around for like five or ten yeah. years where it's like, yeah. oh you can actually just do this full time and yeah. take pictures and make videos or whatever so and and I did not think that like going on that show I wasn't like oh that's gonna happen like I knew that that would happen for the US show but I didn't it was the first season of the show so didn't know if anyone was even gonna watch it and uh, mm -hmm. but yeah but it's been fun because now I feel like I can I have more of an opportunity to like do the things that I was doing before yeah definitely cool so a little background uh, let's get into our first question yeah okay and then I'll just cut it while we look <laughs> okay. Um, so a lot of people are asking how we met, which mm -hmm. I feel is a good place to start. Sure. Yeah, um, yeah. To be honest, I think that I must have been following Brayden on Instagram because you were, well, a photographer mm -hmm. and like everyone follows you. And then somehow you ended up following me and then mm -hmm. we maybe communicated a bit on Instagram. Yeah, I saw some photos. I, I don't even know how this... I, I'm going to say that I saw some photos of you. You were in, near Vancouver and I was like, mm. oh, we should go out and shoot photos mm -hmm. and make videos. And then the first time we did that, was it Alouette or no? Yeah, it was yeah. Alouette. So Brayden yeah. took me out in a friggin' canoe in freezing cold temperatures. It was really cold. Yeah, I don't remember it being that cold, remember. but I remember it being extremely windy. <laughs> Where the waves, this is a lake, it's not even the yeah. ocean, and the waves are like huge and um, we kind of wandered out. Like, I think we got blown by the wind into like the far end of the lake and yeah. then and got then some good photos, but... Yes, and got some really good photos and that was the first time ever shooting with Brayden. Mm -hmm. The wind picked up on our way back as yeah. the sun went down and mm -hmm. that's what made it so difficult and then we both were like paddling full strength yeah. trying to get back to land. Against the wind. Against the wind. I was <laughs> freezing. Yeah. We had a blanket though, remember the blanket? The yeah. blanket, yeah. yeah. And but I remember being freezing. And yeah. then um and that was our first experience shooting mm -hmm. together. After that we shot another time and then honestly it just feels like all of a sudden we just were shooting all the time together mm -hmm. and then also traveling together, mm -hmm. which has been fun. Definitely. Yeah, I think 
from my perspective, my job kind of like taking photos and making videos. Um, I think I go over this a bit in my other blog post about how to take good photos, but sometimes I used to take just landscape photos, like cool waterfall, cool mountain. And then I figured like after kind of diving into what I like the most, it's helpful to have like, like a specific subject in a photo. So it's great to have like a beautiful backdrop. That's like the starting point, but then to have a subject in photos also just kind of brings that next level. Like you can, you get like scale and you get, if it's a person, you get kind of them doing something. So it kind of builds an experience and um, where it can be like a, like a vehicle, it could be like yeah. a tent, mm -hmm. but some, a lot, of, a lot of my photos, it's a person. And yeah, Jasmine been a great, like we've taken lots of great photos and great videos. Everything we kind of like, everywhere we go, we somehow come up with good stuff. And I mm -hmm. feel like it's just a good like win-win. She gets good photos of herself and yeah. videos. I get good photos and videos. It's just like, yeah. yeah. And yeah. yeah. Brayden's always down to like do whatever too. Like if I'm like, True. we should go do this. Like I want to go to Japan. These are the flights. Okay, books of life. Yeah, exactly. Like he's just like down for whatever, which is fun for yeah. me. Because yeah. I'm very spontaneous. And when I want to travel somewhere, go somewhere, it's like not everyone can just do that right away. But Brayden always says yes. Yeah. So far. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I have one other friend who's like that too, like my friend Marco. <laughs> who I'm picking up today at like midnight from Abbotsford Airport. <laughs> but he's like, I'm like, because I need people to go places with too, right? So I ask him, he just, he just like books the flight with me, flips a coin sometimes, but, <laughs> um, but I feel like we just like travel well together. We have yeah. fun. It's like, there's, I've chatted with other people too. Not that it's been like bad at all. It's just sometimes it's harder. Yeah. Um, but it's been pretty easy for the most yeah. part. It's and, easy, so easy that it's like, you don't even, like, I don't even like notice I'm traveling with somebody, mm -hmm. if that makes sense. Like it doesn't, like I wouldn't, it's almost like I'm not even, I don't know. Mm -hmm. It's just effortless. I feel like we, Brayden's very uh, laid back. Doesn't yeah. like to plan anything at all. True. I kind of do like to plan, but I'm not even like that much of a planner, but compared to you, I probably am. Mm -hmm. And and so it works because we're like never butting heads because I feel like we like fill in each other's yeah. missing pieces a little bit when we're traveling. Which yeah, is nice. like Hawaii, for example. We're there. We didn't really have much planned at but all. then we were looking at different places connecting with locals and mm -hmm. been like oh should we do this and then we kind of made a schedule mm -hmm. yeah we would like regroup in the evenings and be like okay let's figure out our top things we want to do mm -hmm. anyway that's probably better for a question that's true let's get yeah. back to a question yeah fair enough <laughs> we're just gonna tell you everything without answering your questions at all okay um okay do you want to go first well why don't we answer the question about like someone asked me how like, honestly, make sure it's recording. Okay. Yeah, we're good. We're already at 10 minutes, so. Okay. So my Auntie Jenny asks, <laughs> I'm curious as to which one of you is the first one up in the morning, and uh, she's also wondering how we do deciding what our plans will be f for each day. Um, mm -hmm. And she said that it seems like we travel very well together, and also, Brayden, when your eyes won't close during sleep, are you in a light sleep, or is it easy to wake up? Okay. So that's the important topic right. we need to discuss, but we will follow up on that. Yeah. For sure. now, let's answer the first part, which is, who's the first one up in the morning? Me, actually, because Brayden hits True. snooze on his alarm. Well, sometimes my alarm <laughs> just like, I might hit snooze without even knowing it. So Yeah, well. so that was happening in Hawaii a lot. Mm -hmm. And then I'd have to wake Brayden up. Like, I don't, yeah, anyway. Yeah. That happened all the time. Yeah. And then, but we, so I guess technically I'd probably be the first one awake. Mm-hmm. Uh, and then how we decide what to do each day is after, like in Hawaii, for example, we would just like regroup at the end of the day, mm -hmm. talk about what our top things were that we wanted to do and sort of like prioritize those based on like how much time we had left. Mm -hmm. And that was good. Yeah. It also depends like where you're staying, how yeah. far away the places are. Um, I guess on Hawaii, there's like good sunrise spots and good sunset spots, depending on what coast you're on. So we were kind of like, okay, sunrise, let's go to this place mm -hmm. that's on the East Coast because yeah. it'll get light first and then sunset, maybe we'll go over there. Yeah. And everything was like within an hour drive, so totally. it was pretty chill. It was good though because like while I was looking up um, like a location or something or photos of a location, Braden would be like looking up the distance, like the time it would take to get there so that we could like mm -hmm. efficiently plan our days. So that was kind of how we did it all the time, which was good. Very good. Yeah, it works out. Yeah. Cool. And then... The eyes. We'll just oh. leave for another time. <laughs> no, there's many questions about your eyes. Okay. So this is a thing. My eyes. It's a thing. Sometimes. I go to bed. I close my eyes. Not sometimes. Okay. Maybe every night. 
I go to bed, I close my eyes, and they somewhat open a little bit during my sleep. I don't know if I move and it was like they open, but somehow they open and people question if I'm awake. No, I'm not. My eyes aren't registering things, information in my brain. And they don't get that dry. Sometimes they get dry, actually, but uh, for the most part, it's just like, yeah. I think it's, it, I looked into it, it's some kind of like muscle thing that I don't even know, but. Yeah, yeah. it's so. pretty terrifying actually. It is Terrifying. Well, it's scary, but it's also very funny to me <laughs> and I have made a habit out of like zooming in and recording. I don't even record all of it, but I have a lot, I have a stockpile of footage of Brayden's eyes just like yeah. partially open. So we need to delete that soon. <laughs> I hope that we can show it on this special. Maybe one second clip. Okay. It's okay. so funny. Okay. Um, okay. And when I wake him up from it, he, instead of, you know, like, let's say you're sleeping and your eyes go like this, when I wake Brayden up, it's just like, like his eyes are already open, so they just, they don't actually like close and open, they just like open wider and then he's awake. It's yeah. very weird. I don't know. <laughs> yeah. Um, okay. Let's do this one. Okay. Are you sponsored to travel or do you make money by prints? Oh, that's so, a, probably more of a question for you. Potentially. So I have never made any money by prints. I think uh, selling prints is a fine way at making money as a photographer. I actually had a print shop for like a week once and then I had all these like analytics kind of plugged into my website and I kind of put out like one story just to see like if people were interested in buying prints mm. and I think 27 people added prints to a cart but nobody bought them. Oh no way! <laughs> yeah. So I was like okay Maybe it was because the website I was using like takes a percentage and you have to kind of keep like the price high and mm. whatever. So nobody bought any prints. So I was like, all right, I'm not going to do that. Mm. But maybe in the future, I'll have like a few. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. I think that's a good idea. But yeah. Uh, so sponsored to travel. I think like rarely we are sponsored to travel. Mm -hmm. uh, we've I've pretty never much... been sponsored to travel before. Yeah, I think like the only instances I've been have been like when a company will like bring me on a trip. And they kind of plan everything, book the flights, and that's like, yeah, I guess I would, I like to stay away from that because I like to plan my own locations and mm -hmm. kind of make my own itinerary and kind of decide like, okay, we're going to stay here, rent this vehicle, go these places. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And when you're on a sponsored trip or something, then you kind of have all those things decided for you. Yeah. Which um, in the past has been like nice because you usually go to nice restaurants that you normally wouldn't mm -hmm. and get to eat good food, but we do that anyways on our own schedule. So we do pay for all of the stuff that we go on, all the trips we go on. We just pay for everything. And, but the way we afford to do that um, is by kind of like working along the way. So like mm -hmm. if we need to shoot something for a company, uh, we do that. I think we, did we do any of that in Japan? Nope. Yeah. No, I didn't do anything like that at all. Japan. But Japan was like your like birthday trip. That was just trip my and birthday trip, yeah. You don't need to work on that trip, but yeah, even like in Hawaii, I had like 20 photos to shoot for Boxed Water, the sponsor mm -hmm. of this video. I'm just <laughs> no, I'm just, I started drinking the water now and there's like none left, so. Oh, shoot. Yeah, um, no, that's good. I sent like a 24 pack. <laughs> I probably should be drinking water. And I, I haven't been except for I have water in the other room now, so that's good. There you go. So yeah, stuff like that. And I had another brand on board too that was kind of like wanting photos. So we had some of those taken on the trip too. Yeah. But basically that's kind of like how my approach to going on trips. Plus I have like the company that um, I buy everything on the business visa. I just swipe away and Ryan uh, cringes probably from his desk here. <laughs> no. But for the most part, if you're wondering how that works, I pay back my expenses that I've spent on the trip to the company through like, cause I, anything, anything that I do where I make money, like my personal like mm -hmm. Instagram sponsored posts where money comes in, it goes mm -hmm. into the company. You should probably explain what the company is. The company. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so, Toth Media, in a very short explanation, uh, we do websites, photo, video, marketing, pretty much ads, everything for a variety of companies. I think we have like 10 or 12 companies um, on monthly retainers, so they pay us monthly to do certain things. Sometimes that includes photos in cool places. A lot of the time it doesn't. It just, mm. It's just me sitting here editing and doing shoots locally. Um, a lot of the guys do other work too for them, and that kind of pays for all of our salary and then I kind of use the business card to travel but then pay it back because it wouldn't be fair if all of us are working here mm -hmm. making tons of money for the company and then I'm just like spending it all yeah, traveling. Yeah. So <laughs> yeah. we have a good system so far. That's good. Um, on, on some trips where I actually do do work for the company then we can figure out like a way to so I don't have to pay for the whole trip because I actually do work when I'm away. Mm -hmm. So that kind of 
we've been figuring that out. I think we might do a follow up in like a year or so on that topic because mm-hmm. it might change. Mm-hmm. But it's pretty much just like us talking and figuring out the best way to pay for everything. So yeah. And for you, you probably just you pay for everything and then. I just pay as for everything and go in. a bit broke and then, and then work more and then pay off my credit cards and then do it all over again. <laughs> yeah, pretty much. Good system. Mm-hmm. For now. Oh, okay. One day. <clears throat> Somebody asked, this might be a good one, is like travel tips. So like where's the best place we've been to? Well, Brayden and I have only been to like a few locations together. Mm-hmm. I mean, for me, it was Japan. But that's just because like I love Japan so much. Um... And I would recommend that for a solo trip. That was the other part of the question. And then how do we plan our trips, locations? Um, is it random or methodical? I feel like for me, it's more about what there is to do there and like kind of like the culture of the place or like the feeling of the place. Uh, and obviously like being somewhere beautiful helps. But mm-hmm. uh, And for you, I think it's a lot to do with like somewhere probably that you haven't been before that you can like get new content, shoot a bunch. Yeah. I think when I choose to travel somewhere, I just look at the opportunity to make cool videos and photos. So I look at the place, I see kind of the spectrum of how expensive it is versus how nice Mm -hmm. it is for photos. Hawaii is like kind of a a mix where it's like a bit more expensive because it is like kind of a nice part of the US Mm -hmm. in a sense. So Mm -hmm. things are pricey, but then you do get that tropical locations, palm trees. I love palm trees. So Mm -hmm. like anywhere... I don't know. It's like a good like middle ground. And then Iceland, for example, is like really expensive, but then it's really nice um, and very accessible. And I don't know. I can't think of any like cheap places to go. I guess like um, the cheaper places to go would be like Indonesia and like Bali mm-hmm. and stuff, which I haven't been. I don't think you've, well, you've been I did a, while a long ago. time ago. I think it's a bit different. Um, but you do get nice photos there as well as not being expensive. So yeah. I kind of just try to balance those two things, price and how good the photos are because I, I there's places I'd want to go just for like going their purposes but for the mm-hmm. most part I kind of want to go places where I can get photos and videos because if I just travel places where I don't get photos then my career just like yeah dies and well, that's so. also <laughs> the like nice thing for you is that you that's like part of what you really love like yeah you love it so it's not like you're like going there and then you feel like you're like working the whole time like it's not like you actually just really that that's kind of your favorite part is like capturing it yeah when you're in a location, so it's, true. it's nice that you feel that way. Yeah, some people say like, oh, don't you like just to sit and like put your camera down and enjoy a sunset? It's like, I'd put my camera down. I'd you have like, anxiety. Yeah, <laughs> want to take my camera so bad, so. I do enjoy it, like traveling, taking photos and videos. It's not like a vacation vibe, because it's a, like sunrise, sunset, driving, but it's it's still what I enjoy, so it's mm-hmm. fun. Mm-hmm. I could answer like three or four questions about cameras quickly, if you want. Yeah, 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 oh, and yeah, do, okay, so can I, Intro the question? Yeah. What question? I'm going to say a question, and then you say, oh, I have one similar. Okay. Um, so I have a couple of questions for you, I assume, uh, because I don't know that much about camera gear equipment, even though I sort of try. Um, one person's asking what the best like starter camera is, which I think is a really good question, and then um, best cameras to travel with. So that's sure. similar. Yeah, yeah. I, I would say... <clears throat> Best starter camera, depends if you want to do like photo and video or just photos. Just photos, there's lots of like, um, like every company has their like intro camera. So um, Canon, you have like the Rebel series, T2i, T5i, whatever. And then you have Sony, A6000, and then you get up, um, in, if you get up into like the A6300, A6500, that kind of, it's a lot like a video heavy features, which kind of raises the price a bit. So I'd say like my first camera was a Canon t 2i um which i think is like very old now and you probably get for like 300 bucks um i think i did a video on this which i will put here (laughs) but um i'd say like yeah if you're looking at just getting the best bang for your buck right off the bat i just get like a new iphone like i feel like they do so well for like normal photos and videos somebody asked me this the other day like oh I want to take night photography though like stars I'm like okay mm. well then you have you, you definitely need like a bigger ca- bigger sensor on your camera so like a full frame sensor so Canon would be like a good like a 6d would be a good um good intro to see like an ant on the wall over there mm. <laughs> get distracted but um yeah 6d is like pretty cheap and a really good camera for photos and then the Sony equivalent would be like an a7 II probably or an original A7S would be good too. It's full mm. frame, good low light. Actually, it's good videos too. Um, but then 
yeah, if you want photos and videos, I'd definitely go onto the Sony side because you get the best, like, like tons of features. It wasn't an ant, it was a fly and it just flew by me. So. Oh, great. <laughs> <laughs> um, I'd say... I see you haven't mentioned the camera that I own. Is it a Fuji? Yeah. Fuji what? Graham doesn't like them. X X-T-20. X-T-20. Okay, yeah. I'm not really familiar with the whole Fuji line, but I've heard they have good features too. The X-T-2, I believe, my friend just got. Yeah, it's better um, than that. It looks good. Mm -hmm. But yeah, I'd say from my perspective, if you want to do just photos, go with a either crop sensor, a 6000 or Canon Rebel. Um, one step up would be full frame, a7 II for Sony, 6D for Canon. And then if you want like really good video, really good photos, just get the camera I'm using right now, which is the a7 III. It is like 2000 American, but it's like future proof for like, I don't know, five years. I was I gonna mean, say like something you can grow into if you're actually wanting to get into photography, yeah. that's probably important. Totally, yes, yes. But yeah, crop sensors um, are cheaper because are like better because the lenses aren't as expensive too, which is something to take in consideration. So yeah, that's what I recommend. Good recommendations. And I will give you. I'll just answer a few more about the cameras here. So what camera do you use for videos? I use the A7 III. Uh, it works good. 4K video like we're doing right now. Um, slow mo video like we did in Hawaii and like I do everywhere. Pretty much snowboarding yesterday. Mm -hmm. Um, it works great because my like workflow and I think Jasmine has noticed is like I take video then I take photos and I take video and then I always switch back and forth so to have a camera that can do both well is helpful I do have a bigger camera that technically shoots better video um, slower slow-mo high resolution stuff but it's just like kind of a uh, it takes a lot of time to use and to set up and batteries die quicker and it's heavy so hiking is like difficult mm. with it so yeah, I think I'd I would lose out on opportunities using the bigger camera more. So I just like the smaller cameras that I'm using here. Um, that's what my recommendation is. I guess that wasn't even the question. That was what camera to use. <laughs> uh, favorite lenses to use on the 7 III? I got asked this three times Ooh. with a laughing face for some reason. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> um, I'd say the best lens that I like to use is just like the 16 to 35 G Master. Um, it is just, it is an expensive lens, but it's like my 16 mil is like my ideal focal length for most like landscape stuff. It's wide and video works well too. And then it goes into 35, which is a good like portrait length. That's what we're shooting on right now. This is a Sigma 35, 1.4 though. So you get 1.4, so shallow depth of field instead mm. of the 2.8. But then, yeah, with the 16, 35, you can go into 35, which looks good for like B-roll or portrait photos. And then with this camera, you can click a button for APS-C mode and get like 50 mil too mm. for video. So it's kind of nice. Um, but yeah, that answered that question. Maybe you can do a question on yours. Okay. Let's see here. Um, someone asked what our, um, what was it here? What has been the most, Ali Lou writes, what has been the most unexpectedly fun place you guys have traveled to? Well, we've only traveled to a few places together so far, mm -hmm. um, but I would say Edmonton. Yeah, Edmonton. It's not my <laughs> ideal place to go, but... It was unexpectedly fun. It was, yes. Because we went to West Edmonton Mall. First of all, it was middle of winter, so not a lot to do. Went mm -hmm. to West Edmonton Mall, rode a roller coaster, yeah. stayed on the roller coaster to ride it one more time, and then Braden told me that there's been horrible, tragic accidents on it. And yeah. I was already feeling horrible inside. Like, I was like, I don't know if I want to go on this roller coaster. And normally I'm like out. all about out. it. I mean, yeah, we're alive, but. Yeah, it was good. I actually, when I grew up in Calgary, went to West Seven Mall as a kid mm. and played in the wave pool, which we didn't do, but <laughs> it's fun. Which we didn't do. <laughs> but the roller coaster was like, yeah, pretty unreal. And it was. And we did virtual reality. Mm -hmm. um, not at West Seven Mall. Well, actually, yeah, near West, I don't even know. Yeah. It's all one big. Yeah, that was fun. It was negative 30 out. <laughs> so degree Celsius, I don't know what that is in Fahrenheit. I'll put it. Know. I'll put it here. <laughs> and um, but yeah, we shot the ice castles and then got to do some fun stuff as well. So yeah, wouldn't have went there if it wasn't for the ice castles. So good job, Edmonton, for mm -hmm. having that. So true. Um, let's see if there's anything else. Um, somebody asked best frugal tips from our trip to Hawaii. I saw that too. Oh. Mm. Oh, are we all getting the same questions? Or? No, no. Oh, okay, so. okay. Anyways, 
yeah, best frugal tips for the trip to Hawaii. Mm -hmm. uh, I felt like it was kind of expensive. Just like, first of all, it's all in American dollars, so. Yeah, Canadian dollars isn't doing too well right now. Yeah. And then uh, also, but I mean, we got there without, okay, maybe plan your trip in advance because we did not. Mm -hmm. So we arrived. Oh, okay, wait. Let me back up. Book your flights on the same day. <laughs> yeah. I accidentally booked my flight the day after Braden, and I kind of thought it was his fault until I realized that back in the text messages, I had confirmed the dates yep. that were wrong, and I booked a different one. Anyway. It was good, though. I was just chilling for a day. It's fine. Yeah, so he's alone, <laughs> and he probably spent more money than he wanted to because he was there for an extra day without, like, someone well, else. I made up with, made up, made oh, up with yeah, David. Oh, yeah, you made up with your friend. Okay. And we went and so. swam in the ocean, so it okay. worked out. Good. And then he got the rental car and a free upgrade. So maybe if you're going to get a rental car, mm -hmm. um, aim to get one that isn't in available so that you get a free upgrade. That's a frugal tip. Um, it's true. We stayed at a uh, hostel because we hadn't planned our trip very well and mm -hmm. arrived with nowhere to stay. Yes. And the hostel was disgusting. Yeah, it wasn't that bad. Oh, it was pretty bad. And it wasn't very cheap. So maybe we don't well, have it was any like right good in, tips. Right in Honolulu. So I think it hostels was, probably our best we could have spent an extra 30 bucks a night and got a hotel room. Totally, yeah. Which would have been maybe nicer. But it was just so loud and, and like I don't think they ever washed anything in there ever. And yeah. But it was fine because we weren't spending our time in the mm -hmm. in our accommodation anyway. So It's true. Yeah. Yeah, if you have time in advance, you can read reviews on places and find the cheapest. And, and probably Airbnb, I would think. Like from what That's I true. could find, like I looked into things before we went and what I found prior to getting there without mm -hmm. accommodation was that Airbnb seemed to be a better choice. There were more options. Yeah. Anyway, yeah. Mm -hmm. so we don't have very good tips for that. Yeah. Uh, food Mart though. Oh, Food Mart. Food Mart for yeah. poke. Yeah. Holy mackerel. Get the California roll of poke. It's so good. Yeah. And it's not that expensive. It's like six bucks for a bowl and we probably have that like twice a day. So. And you won't get mercury poisoning and we are proof. Mm-hmm. It's true. Um, okay, I'll answer some, uh, do you use Lightroom? I do use Lightroom. I use Lightroom. I import all the photos and then if I'm shooting with Jasmine, she'll go through all the photos and pick her favorites. So I don't have to edit cause I take a lot of photos. I usually burst so mode it many. 10 frames per second on the a7 III, which is why I like to use that too. So then we can do like move, moving shots where we can kind of get the perfect angle and then I, we can kind of pick those ones as well and then we just go through them uh, select them i edit them generally I edit like a few of them and then i bring some like my favorite one into photoshop and kind of go from there uh and then i airdrop to my phone and then tweak it on instagram even more so that's kind of like the workflow mm -hmm. so lightroom then photoshop then iphone for editing yeah mm -hmm. and you use photoshop on your phone yeah, I like honestly just hack it every time. Like so many people are like, "What presets do you use?" And I'm like, "Well, I'm not a photographer, and I'm I like to edit, but just for fun. And I I do have a laptop, but I just use my phone. And I sometimes yeah. use uh, Lightroom on my phone, the app, and also like Snapseed. And I'll basically just do all these friggin' things like a mishmash, mm -hmm. and then I put it out there. Yeah. And Braden probably doesn't like my edits, but no. It works well because sometimes I edit something and then maybe in your hair there's like some strands that are like way That's too true. yellow for some reason yeah, yeah. and I'm like, oops, and then you just go into Photoshop and just like correct yeah, it. So yeah, because Brayden, I feel like you edit for like the landscape and then I'm like, but my hair. True. Or my yeah. like skin color looks weird or something so then I like change, I'll yeah. tweak it. Skin tone, so. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Um, let's see here. What kind of makeup does Jasmine wear? Oh. Do you have any brands, or did you just use an assortment? I use an assortment. So I figured. I'll save that for a video. Not mm -hmm. video. Yeah, that's true. Yeah. Too um, much to explain. Best place to stop on the Sea to Sky Highway for photos? Oh. I'd say Sea to Sky Gondola, mm. because you get to go true. way up in the mountains, and I feel like they built it like so perfectly for photos, because you get the bridge, the suspension bridge, mm -hmm. that overlooks mm -hmm. like the whole ocean, which is sweet. That's true. And there's uh, some hikes and stuff up there, so you can kind true. of get off on your own and find mm -hmm. your own spots. But also, like, the Chief's nice. Um, true, yeah. If you want to hike up it. Yeah. Where else? 
Britannia Bay is pretty nice. Yeah, Britannia Beach there, pretty nice. If you can get down to the water. Mm -hmm. There used to, yeah. There used to be like a tree house there, but now it's gone. So oh, that would be, be cool. cool. Mm -hmm. um, anywhere else there? Porto Cove, pretty nice too. Oh yeah, too. Porto Cove is really pretty. Yeah. You can actually get our campsite like right on the water. Yeah, yeah, yeah. If you drive in there, usually it's, it's like a, in advance. I would think. Yeah, it's fine. pretty. There's not too many campsites, so you probably want to do that in advance, especially in the summertime. But you get yeah. decent sunsets. Mm -hmm. uh, it happens earlier because the mountains, the sun goes behind the mountains. But yeah, it's pretty good. Mm -hmm. Are there any other questions, or should we finish off with where are we traveling to next? Um, let's see. So someone asked um, about posing during a photo shoot. Mm -hmm. I th I try not to pose. I guess I try to like move around and stuff. Mm -hmm. But I'm not a model, so I just try to like. And I don't really. I'm not that helpful too. I'm just like, okay, walk here, walk there, <laughs> yeah. sit down here. Sometimes I'm like, do I do I want to like lift my arms in the air? But sometimes it just. <laughs> sometimes that's... I look so stupid. You don't know, actually, like, this is probably important to note, and I feel like people generally understand this, but, like, mm -hmm. the amount of photos that are so bad compared to, like, I, I mean, personally of me, compared to, like, the good ones there. I think that's pretty general, though. Like, yeah, I know. I, like, it doesn't really matter who I shoot with. There's always going to be, like, outtakes, and then yeah. the one that just, like, yeah. for some reason just looks the best. It's the right lighting. It's the right look. It's the right positioning and yeah, yeah. you kind of just have to go through and true. variation is key just try different things and then um yeah go from there yeah true and i probably should like i don't know learn how to do other things too like i feel like i just sort of stand there sometimes but it's, it's just, good when there's yeah. like action happening mm -hmm. like when we were doing the stairway to heaven oh that's a, maybe another thing we should talk about but when yeah. we were doing the stairway to heaven obviously like climbing up the stairs it's like mm -hmm. easy i don't have to like think about it that yeah much. um mm -hmm. yeah. yeah i think just trial and error until you find something you like because <clears throat> even on the different lenses sometimes when you use a wide angle lens depending how you position the lens it'll cause like distortion in the corner so legs can be look really long and mm. heads can look big or whatever so you have to like, kind of mess around with um like how you hold the camera what lens you use and also uh what your subject's doing too so mm. i think just trial and error until you figure out what you like um, but yeah, can you talk about your beginnings in your career and advice to hopefuls newcomers? I think that question or the answer would be different for you and I. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I think like generally there's like an opportunity with social media to be able to go out and do something you're passionate about and it's got to be in the form of like content, whether it's photos or videos or blog writing or art and then to put that out there online and then get a response and help that like hone your skills. And then eventually um, if you're consistent and you're putting out stuff that's unique and interesting, interesting and decent, then mm -hmm. you'll eventually find an audience on some kind of platform. And then um, with an audience, then you can pretty much um, start to make that a career as uh, you get people to buy your art or you mm -hmm. get sponsors or stuff like that. So, um, I think that's like a semi like new thing like we were talking about earlier, yeah. whereas like previously people who have had audiences were generally people like on TV or like celebrities or artists that are big and mainstream and then maybe they got like the opportunity to do sponsorships and stuff, which obviously was going on. But then now with social media, anybody can kind of like mm -hmm. put in the work and um, if they're passionate about something mm -hmm. that's like visual or people can yeah or people can learn from I think that that's like that's a big true. thing it's like mm -hmm. either you have to like have something to offer I guess and I think the goal shouldn't be like gaining a lot of followers it should be like putting out stuff that you're passionate about yeah and if that's your end goal is to like grow your audience just try to focus on what you're passionate about and like offer something otherwise just do it for fun for yourself but mm -hmm. obviously we're talking about yeah. career stuff so yeah yeah you can there's many ways like my I don't know I guess my passion is going out and <coughs> shooting photos and videos and stuff and then the company is just kind of like I mean the company is a lot of fun too because I get media. to do stuff with my friends but um it's like it's not like oh, I'm gonna go and build a company and then it's gonna give me a career that I like it yeah. just kind of happened as I kind of committed myself to something I enjoy which was photography mm. uh this kind of just like 
came out of that. Mm -hmm. So then I think that's going to be um, probably like the the process that most people take is they find something they like and they go and pursue it until it either stays at a hobby or you mm -hmm. get opportunities to make it a career. Yeah, I think you're just lucky at that point and obviously like put in the work, but. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, because I was kind of like obsessed with it at the yeah. beginning and then eventually I was like, and then you just kind of, you talk to people, you watch videos like this where you learn certain things and then mm -hmm. like I watched a ton of videos where people just talked about social media and stuff and I was like, oh, that's interesting. Yeah. I'm gonna try that or whatever so yeah mm -hmm. it definitely opens a lot of doors and even if you're like you have a little business or like an online store or something like mm -hmm. I always think about that how how easy it is to kind of market yourself online it doesn't have to be you personally being marketed but the 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 thing that you want to make even like let's mm -hmm. say you make freaking macrame items mm -hmm. you make a little online store through Instagram showing like inspiration photos of the spaces that you decorate with your product and then I don't know send it to some influencers see if they'll post about it like I feel like it's pretty easy not easy but it's accessible mm -hmm. to yeah. get your stuff your product whatever it is out to a large audience um, through social media which is great mm -hmm. in this day and age true um, do you have another question uh, the final question I had yeah. was from do you have another one Maybe. Okay. I mean, people keep on uh, answering them, so let's use this one as the last one, and then, yeah, let's just do that. Okay. Hard or soft tacos, though? <gasps> soft. Yeah, I think. Because both. I feel like hard tacos, all right, I'm not going to diss on Old El Paso, because it's actually probably my favorite food and has been since I was a kid. Hard tacos all the way with that. But now that I'm adult, an adult can't even talk but <laughs> I would probably go and like get like real tacos which I think normally are on like corn tortillas that are soft it's true I do like but those. if we're talking old El Paso and hard tacos all the way those are pretty good Mom, sometimes so though good. depending on how long they sit on your shelf they can like gouge your roof of your mouth oh that's so true yeah you have to sacrifice the yeah. roof of your mouth pain it's true okay what's your last question okay <laughs> My last question is from Tiara. Mm -hmm. or Tiara. Um, Tiara, I think. Uh, where are we traveling to next? Good question. Yeah, I feel like Braden and I kind of just like wing it and choose a place sort of last minute and go for it. Um, I really, uh, what do you, well, I mean, I really want to go to the east coast of Canada and like go to Newfoundland mm -hmm. and Labrador. I'm excited about that. And um, that's a possibility. Yeah, we've been in the works with emails, <laughs> but uh, I'm excited about because icebergs that kind of float down. Mm -hmm. So, so cool. I guess we did Google like when they float down, and mm -hmm. it is in mm -hmm. May, which mm -hmm. is coming up May or June. in a month. So. Yeah, and it's uh, it's just like I I feel like so many of us leave Canada to go travel elsewhere. I speak to so many people. Like I said, I've been a hairstylist forever, so I've talked to so many people about this kind of thing. Mm -hmm. But so few of us have been to the East Coast unless you're like from there, like to the real East Coast and. A lot of people say Toronto is the East Coast. It's not. Um, <laughs> Newfoundland. Like, mm -hmm. going over there. So few of us have done it. It's so beautiful over there from what I've seen, and I really want to go. And yes, it is very expensive to travel over, like, travel in Canada in general. But um, I think it's, I think that it would be neat to showcase a little bit of what Canada has to offer and, like, the beautiful landscapes that are over on the East Coast that look so similar to places like, Iceland and like I don't know kind of like um sure. I really want to swim by a glacier so yeah well an iceberg. gotta be careful around we'll see icebergs, we'll see they say true okay cool yeah. and then potentially potentially back to Hawaii in July mm -hmm. and I should respond to that group yes you should uh was there another place Braden's off on his own things soon but like for him and I doing things together I think yeah I don't know figure it out we're, we're gonna only figure it out within a few weeks so yeah <laughs> yeah all right thanks for all of your questions mm -hmm. it was lovely to answer them and um and yeah this was only like a 45 minute video yeah hopefully it'll be <laughs> cut down so that you it. can tolerate it yeah and then maybe we'll do a follow-up <laughs> when we get more questions we'll be able to think about things yeah. and whatever so yeah cool until next time leave comments below mm -hmm. It's not a blog, so it's not really a place to comment unless they click the YouTube link and then comment. But Click the YouTube link if you want. Yeah, if you have a question, then <laughs> yeah. Okay, see you guys in the next one. Later. Bye.
Thank you.